when we do a study, any kind of study, we typically want to generalize the results of that study to the entire population. But we can't ask a question to everyone in the entire population, and so what we do is we select just a group of people from the population, and we choose just to study them. You might be familiar with things such as the Gallup poll, which is a public opinion poll in the U.S. and in other countries. And you might hear some of their statistics quoted in newspapers or news shows. For example, a study published in April 2014 showed that one in four Americans were skeptical about global warming. The poll also allows us to compare how public opinion changes over time. So I've written out a, a graph here. A poll conducted in 1996 asking if marriages between same-sex couples should be legally valid or not found that 27% of people thought that gay marriages should be recognized, while 68% of people thought that they should not be recognized. But when we look at the results of the same question when it was asked of the American public in 2013, we now find that 54% of respondents say that same-sex marriages should be recognized, while only 43% believe that they should not. But how did they get this information? Did they call up every American and ask them their opinion? No, the time and resources that it would take to do that would make it absolutely impossible. Instead, they just asked a subset of the American population, or a sample of the population, and then they used that information to draw conclusions about the American population as a whole. In order to make sure that the conclusions that we draw from our sample can be generalized to the entire population, we have to follow a few rules. First of all, we have to pay attention to sample size. Clearly just asking five people about their opinions and then trying to make statements about the rest of the population isn't really going to cut it. We also have to be careful that the population that we're sampling from is actually indicative of what we want to study. So we have to define our population. So we have to define the population before we can sample from it. Let's say I wanted to look at doctors' opinion of a new type of drug. I would want to sample from within a population of doctors and not, you know, the American population as a whole. I would also want to make sure that I was using random sampling. And ideally, this means that everyone from the population would have an equal likelihood of getting picked to participate in our survey. So if we have a large sample size, and we've been careful to sample from the population that we're actually interested in looking at, and if we've been sure that we've sampled randomly from that population, then our survey data tends to be more reliable. In other words, in order to generalize the conclusions that we're drawing from our sample to the larger populations, we want to make sure that our sample is representative of the people within that population. And we use things like large sample sizes and random sampling as a way to ensure that. Not having enough participants and not paying attention to our population and not trying to sample randomly from that population might lead to sampling bias. And this is something that you should definitely keep in mind when you look at polls that are conducted on the internet, especially things like political websites. So those surveys are not actually telling you the percentages of the population that agree or disagree with a, you know, a gun control law or same-sex marriages. Instead, they're just showing you the percentage of people who read that website and have answered that particular survey. And since people who are conservative are more likely to visit conservative websites and, and liberals are more likely to visit liberal-leaning websites, the sample of responses to that poll will tend to lead towards those different ends of the spectrum. So in this case, the sample is not matching the population that the website actually intends to study. And these types of polls are all over the internet and newspapers. And so you always have to keep this in mind, and you always have to think of who the sample is when reading about statistics of certain populations. You always need to think of who they're sampling, the size of their sample, and whether or not that sampling is actually random. And since these samples are everywhere, see if you can take some time to find some and then post them in the comments below. See if you can find some that are maybe unintentionally and hilariously biased, and then we'll all get a chance to look at them and see what they say. I think having some examples would really help to illustrate this point.